you think? I don't see how he can do much better than that. Oh, oh, come on. I'm tired shopping. Okay. Say, I wish we had some rice. Why? You hungry? You know what I mean. It's bad luck without rice. Well, you don't have to worry about the old shoes. I'm wearing them. Judge Bush? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Won't you come in? It's pretty cold well, outside tonight. It sure is. We, uh, we want to get married. Married? Really? You don't disapprove, I trust. Oh, no, not at all. I should say not. They want you to marry him, Papa. Oh, me? Oh, yes, of course. Well, come right in. Uh, uh, this is Mrs. Bush. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Yeah. Bush? Good evening. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, Mrs. Bush. Oh. The same to you. Yes. Oh, look at the little cat. Oh, hello. Let's see now. You said you want to get married. That's right. You mean now? Well, any time within the next four or five minutes. Oh, splendid. Now, if I could just find those certificates I have. I had them around here this morning. Um, what do you call them, dear? Licenses, Papa. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think these... Yes, here it is. Here's a brand new pad. Marriage license. Uh, one or two? Uh, two people, one marriage. Yeah. One, I think, Papa. Uh, it is one, isn't it? Well, don't you know? Uh... May I see? Yes, go ahead. Yes, this is it. Yes, yes, you see, there's a place for you. Yes. And there's a place for him. <laughs> now, would you sit down here and fill it out, please? Certainly. Now, here's a pen. Thank you very much. That's all right. Now, I've got a little black book around here somewhere that tells the whole thing. I saw it around here this morning somewhere. I beg your pardon, Judge. Yes? May I ask you how long you've been in this business? Oh, about uh, three or four hours. Hours? Yes, the man brought the letter about 6 or uh, 6.30, didn't he? 6.35, exactly. Oh, yeah. oh, it was like a beautiful Christmas present. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't it, dear? Yes, indeed. Uh, what sort of letter? Well, His appointment. He's just been appointed. <laughs> this is his first marriage. Yes, oh. my very first. Oh, say. Steve. Yes. Age? 44. Color? Pearl gray. Here it is. Oh. Yes, this is it. Thank you, Mama. Now we're all set. See? Signed by the governor. Same. Governor Bush is Judge Bush's nephew. Really? Uh -huh. But are you sure you know how to marry people? Well, it's, uh, it's all right here in the book. What's the sophist? Oh, I don't know. What do you think, honey? You mean try another one? Why not? Oh, no. Please. What good would that do? Everybody has the same book. But they know where to look in the book. They don't have to go fumbling around through the index to find out how to get started. Please don't go. This is our first marriage. And on Christmas Eve. I believe it would break my heart if we failed at it. Well, we're not blaming you, Mrs. Bush, but we can't afford to take any chances. If we're married by tomorrow, we have a chance at a top radio program. It's a breakfast show, and we'll be a fine, wholesome, young American couple having a bit of good, clean, nauseating fun over the bacon and eggs every morning. Oh. However revolting this may appear to you, it means a very pretty penny to Miss uh, Goody Two Shoes and to me. And besides, we love each other. That's right, too. And we naturally wouldn't want anything fouled up right here at the post. Who's going to foul it up? All I got to do is read it out of the book. Well, I'm sorry, but this is my first time out, too. And I think I'd rather have it handled by somebody who's already up in the park. Wouldn't you, doll baby? Would you really like to see an old hand take charge here? Now I see the book. Page 46. Uh, we'll need another witness, too. Oh, that's right. It uh, starts right about there. Yeah, I see. <laughs> For heaven's sake, you're right. Hey, you. Take off your coat. You're not being married in a pool room. Say, how do you know so much? Don't ask. Have you got the ring? My friends, we are gathered here on this occasion Hold it, to Josh. unite these Wait young Wait till people. I give you the cue. Uh, huh? Oh, no. Come on. Come along. Put right oh. under here, huh? 
Uh, uh, you stay there, laughing boy. All right, now. Silent night. Now, all we need is... Ready, White Fang? Ready, Panther Girl. Take it, Judge. Dear Senator, your appeal for a pardon for your brother-in-law. Yes? Your Uncle Melvin's here. Oh, really? Send him in. Your grandfather's here. Hello, honey. How are you? Hi, Grandpa. How's Grandma? Oh, she's fine, I guess. I... Well, how are you, Grandma? What brings you up here? I don't know. Frank called me up on the phone last night and told me to be here at 11 o'clock. Yes? The Attorney General's here. Send him in. Here he is now. How are you, Cousin Frank? You dope. Hey, see, that's the way he was to me over the phone last night. This is a letter to my office from the Attorney General's office in Sacramento, California. There's a woman out there named Grice who sued for divorce last week on the grounds of mental cruelty. Her husband refused to pass the salt. She had two eyewitnesses to the charge, and so the divorce was granted. Grice. It was a routine, open and shut case. Until it turned out there was no record that they'd ever been married in the first place. I seem to remember that name from someplace. All this in spite of the fact that both parties swore in court that they had been married at Gretna Green in this state by one Justice of the Peace, Bush. Oh, I remember. That was the fellow that gave me the 20 bucks. Do you remember the date? None offhand, but I got it right here. I look it up for you. I know it was one of the first couples that I married. I... Uh, Oh, here it is. December 27th. So it's a couple of days after Christmas. Oh, what about it? When did you marry your first couple? Well, that was the day I got the appointment. Christmas Eve. How many couples did you marry in that week between Christmas Eve and December 31st? Well, let's see. Ninety-six dollars worth. That's pretty good, huh? Not how much. How many? Oh, oh, uh... Let's see now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six couples. That's it. In one week, he laid six time bombs. How do you mean? He jumped the gun. The appointment was for January 1st, and this clown began marrying people before he had the authority. Well, I got the letter, and it said I was appointed, and I thought it meant right then. Didn't you even read the letter? Well, not all of it. One down and five to go. What can we do about it? Nothing. Just sit here and wait for them to blow up. Bang, 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 one after the other, all over the country. Until one day, one of them hits the newspapers. And then it'll be the biggest scandal since that mink coat got into the White House. Well, can we pass some kind of a law? What kind of a law? Well, why don't we just write and tell them? Write whom? The couple. And tell them what? That they're not married, that's all. Just like that. Okay, if you want to dress it up a bit, just say somebody gummed up the works and it's a misdeal. And then what? And let them take it from there. Uh, what about that? Won't work. Why not? Too simple. As a matter of fact, I think it's pretty good. Here, let me have that book. Anyway, it's better than sitting around here with our fingers in our ears. Well, you can keep that book. I got it all copied down in another book anyway. Good luck to all of you. We can scratch the grices, and we'll have five left. So that's what we'll do. A nice, quiet letter on the governor's stationery to each couple, explaining the situation and letting them take it from there. Take this, will you? Uh, dear Mr. and Mrs. Blank, due to a most lamentable misunderstanding, the ceremony that joined you in marriage was performed by Justice of the Peace Melvin Bush before the authorized date of his appointment. Accordingly, we are compelled to inform you that you are not legally married.
Yes, Mr. Gladwin. Shall I? Go on. Mr. Gladwin. Mr. Gladwin, I just want to tell you what a great and wonderful thing you and Mrs. Gladwin did for me. My husband and I were... Well, for a while, there was a little situation. You know how it is sometimes. But we're both great admirers of your program. We never miss it. And in the end, the example you set to everyone, with your great love and happiness, brought us together again. Are you insane? Thank you very much indeed. Oh, boy. Well, we have a wonderful script this morning. Eight new sponsors. When the revolution comes, Mr. Graves, the first blow struck will be against radio programs that mention more than 25 sponsors during the first 10 minutes. Did you drop some plug in this cup? No, but then I didn't think of it. Why, what do you mean? That's McKeister's Vitafresh, one of our own products. I know. We're going to be arrested yet for hustling this laundry juice. Say, what happened to that fellow? Remember the... <laughs> Remember the fellow tried that breakfast food we recommended? Is his widow still kicking up a fuss? No, we're okay there, I think. We gave her two tickets to the Doodles Weaver show. Uh, you can't kid me. With all this muck we're peddling, Mrs. Gruesome and I are going to end up in an electric love seat yet. Who are the new chumps? Well, we have Trimoff's pre-shrunk piccalilli. Pre-shrunk by whom? They wash it first in alum, stupid. If you don't mind, I wasn't speaking to you. Now listen, blubberhead. Please, kids, not today. You promised me. Well, then tell him to keep his big bazoo shut. I ask for very little on this program, simply that Mrs. Gladwin dropped dead. I've told you You've got now. to stop it. I tell you, I can't stand it any longer. If you've got to fight, fight at home, not here. We can't fight at home. We don't speak there. Say one thing about our marriage. If there's such a thing as an unjackpot, I've hit it. I can't understand you two. With the best Mr. and Mrs. program on the air, paying you 5,000 bucks a week, why can't you figure out a way to get along together? Why, if it ever got out to the papers the way you fight this problem... Who's the next on the list? Next, we have Twombly's Miracle Skin Food. For those hungry little paws. It's the customary way. I don't know how other people feel about it, but my paws are going to eat exactly what the rest of me eats. I don't care if they're starving. I am not... May we have the next one? Next, we've got Pasternax factory-tested Pussy Willow mattresses. Know them well? They're stuffed with cat hair. They're the kind they hang on walls in insane asylums. And don't you say it! Don't say what? I don't know what on earth you're talking about. You were trying to make a I wasn't going to say Making I didn't say anything. Say oh, it's all about your... where I came from. Ramona, my dear, he never opened his mouth. Well, he was going to. I know him. He never muffed a line like that in his life. He never misses an opportunity. countryside at twilight. <laughs> this is dreadful. You'll have to get remarried at once. <laughs> I mean it. This is a Mr. and Mrs. program. You may not be happy, but by God, for you're supposed to be married anyway. <laughs> Go away, little man. Go away. This news has unseated this poor fellow's reason. <laughs> I'll have to see Mr. Twitchell about this immediately. <laughs>
What a glorious day it is, to be sure. If there were birds this high, they'd be singing away like a choir of Mario Lanzas. Gladly. Yes, Mr. Twitchell? Let's get organized here. What is all this nonsense about you not wanting to get married again? Well, it's true, sir. Heaven has finally blessed our union with a little annulment. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to skip it this time. We've got a nice setup here, and if you're not married, we're cooked. They'd laugh us off the air if our all-American couple blew a gasket in the middle of the wheat cakes. Check on a church or something for these people to get married again right away. Congratulations, folks. Just a minute there. Yes? You're a little ahead of yourself, Mr. Twitchell. We're not getting married again. Why not? Because Mrs. Gladwin and I have built too many of our hopes on this day to have our happiness destroyed with the wave of a hand. In addition to which, I can't stand him. What were you two doing before we put this little bundle together? Well, I was a news commentator with a small but highly regarded program, the news behind the news behind the news. 200 a week tops. And you? I was the blueberry muffin girl on WHAM. One and a quarter at the outside. And what are you getting here? 5,000 a week. See what I mean? You've forgotten one thing, haven't you, Mr. Twitchell? What's that? The contract. What contract? A contract dated April 18th for five straight years at five G's a week, drawn up by the United States Broadcasting Company and signed by Mr. and Mrs. That's it. Now, I'll give you until noon to make up your minds what you want to do next. You rockhead. Now, just a minute. You certainly handled that one like a champion. So why didn't you take over? You're so smart. You mean stamp in front of Mr. Brains himself? Yes, this is a free country. We have free speech here. No one was holding his hand over your mouth. Steve, please, we're off. Now, you keep out of this. Who insisted that we sign that contract, Mr. and Mrs.? I told you then we should sign it individually. I told what you... What do you mean I insisted upon signing it, Mr. and Mrs.? It was your lawyer, that crook friend of yours, who told me what to do. I told you then it was absolutely ridiculous. Francis X. Moriarty. Artie is not a crook. He's a very highly regarded Harvard man and also one of the biggest mouthpieces in New York. You're on, honey. Holy Moses. <laughs> Nine o'clock, and a good, good morning to all America from that all-American couple, the Glad Gladwins, from their cozy little nest in the metropolis of dreams. As American as mince pie and sugar cookies, Steve and Ramona Gladwin bring you at this hour, every morning, their own daily bag of fun, gossip, and helpful hints, the latest from the wonder world of New York. So settle back for 15 minutes of relaxation and diversion while we take you to the homey little <laughs> breakfast table of Steve and Ramona Gladwin. Good morning. Darling. Good morning, Angel. Oh, but you look so rested this wonderful morning, sweetheart. Yes, thanks to our luscious Pastanac factory-tested Pussy Willow mattress. The mattress that takes all of the guesswork out of sleeping. So soft, so restful. And only seventeen fifty at Muck and Fuss Brothers. Yes, only the hearts of the tender Pussy Willows are used. Breakfast ready, McCushler? Yes, Papa Mia. Here's your coffee. Thank you, doll. Ah, uh, what coffee, what aromatic fragrance. It must be... You're right, love. I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> yes, it's McKeister's Vita Fresh Coffee. The coffee with that locked-up goodness for everybody. Grind or drip. Quick, Precious, another cup. There you are. <laughs> uh... Peach fuzz, you've spilled some on your vest. Oh, goody. Now I can try some of that little panther spot remover. No harsh rubbing. Just spray a little panther on your vest and watch it eat the spot out. And imagine, darling, a big two-ounce bottle for only three dollars. Or if you are a messy eater, there's the handy, economical 40-gallon vat. Oh, darling, what juicy gossip I have for our listeners this morning. Stop, Ramona. Don't you dare move, Ramona. But, darling... What have you done to your hair? That sheen, that brilliance. Why, I did just what so many society women are doing these days. I went to Madame Yvonne's hairdo heaven. It is divine. Your head looks like the back of a bunny. Madame Yvonne uses a sensational hairdressing. It contains that new mystery ingredient, chicken fat. Chicken fat? <whistles> ah, our canary, little Yasha. My, but doesn't little Yasha sound glorious this morning? And I bet I just know what he's saying, too. 
Little Yasha is saying, thanks. Gee willikers, Mumsy and Dazzy. Thanks for feeding me that swell Dr. Gruber's three-way bird seed that comes in 15 and 25 cent packages, tailored to fit the beak. And what a happy little birdkin he is, to be sure. And why not, sugar? Yasha knows that the paper on the bottom of his cage is New York's leading daily, The Morning Record. The Morning Record has 32 columnists, 28 pages of comics, and no news. Oh, excuse me, Apple Honey. I have a letter here from Mrs. T.S. Button of Moth Holes, Idaho. Mrs. Button had a splitting headache for 40 years until she heard of Pepso Bepso on our program. Only Pepto Bepto is guaranteed to fizz twice, once before you drink it, and once after. Good morning, Mumsy and Dazzy. Why, it's our little three-year-old daughter, Irene. Irene Pet. I love the way your tooth is shining this morning. Yes. I brushed it with Dr. Pratt's homogenized toothpaste. And what does Dr. Pratt's toothpaste do, baby? Dr. Pratt's homogenized toothpaste gets into your mouth, rolls up its sleeves, and really does a job on your filthy old fangs. Isn't she cute? Now run along to school, baby. Now, Papa. I want you... Mama, we don't have to send their money back. They're crazy about each other. Yes, but I don't know if that's the right way to look at it, Papa. You can't just fool around with people's lives like that. This is a serious responsibility. Now, if all these people are not really married, well, I don't know if it's honest to keep their money. Why should I send their money back when they're just as happy as if they were really married? But that's not the point, Melvin. Now, look, Mama. When these people get that letter from the governor, they'll have a choice that other people never get. Now, if they like each other, all they got to do is to say yes again. And if they don't, well, it's all over, and that's the end of it. Who else ever got a second chance like that for a few bucks? Well, if you say so. People that lucky ought to be sending me money. Well, that leaves four more couples that you married that week. Well, who's next? Next? Mr. and Mrs. Jefferson D. Norris, Sanatobia, Mississippi. Oh, yes. That was that cute, shy little girl and that jerk of a fella. Why, he wasn't any jerk at all. He just had a lot of foolish ideas about who was going to be boss in the house. Yeah, that's what I said, a jerk. But that little girl, oh, wasn't she cute? You remember how she blushed about everything? Mrs. Mrs. Coldwater. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner and new state champion, Mrs. Senatobia. <laughs> Boy, that's really something. My wife. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, that's all right. Keep looking. Much obliged. Let's go. A few things about your story. Don't worry now. Tell me one thing. Are you going to carry this idea out of other states? Oh, definitely. Definitely in other states. Yes. Hi, honey. Hi, darling. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, I'll see you later. Come on. Come on. Our governor's waiting. Come here. Soon as she is now. Yeah. Hi, Mommy. Hi, 
you, darling. Make it snappy, will you? Is she going out again? Yeah, we're going to that Legion party. I want to get the Legion to back us to Atlantic City. But she's already been out all day. Look, uh, we got to get the financing done, don't we? Hurry her up, will you, please? I cooked the supper already. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, honey. It's very important tonight. Spitzy all right? He's all right. I don't know whether I am or not. What's the matter? Don't you want your wife to go to Atlantic City? Well, sure, but I'm... Well, all right. Give her a break then, will you? We're up against a tough proposition here. They like this Miss America business. They're loaded. They got the backing of everybody. Pullman drawing rooms, hotel suites, limousines, everything you can think of. We're just getting started with Mrs. America. We got to hustle for everything we get. Will Miss Mississippi really have a limousine? But your life she will. If we get the backing of the Legion tonight, we'll have one too. What we got to do is to get this thing set before the finals next Saturday. If we haven't hooked a sponsor before then, we're dead. We won't have enough money to take us to Memphis, much less Atlantic City. How many rooms? How many rooms where? In this Mississippi suite. Oh, two, three, I don't know. Both ways? Both ways what? Miss Mississippi's drawing room. Open your mouth. Come on, open it. Doris, at the office? Why don't you just deliver the mail and save those jokes for your wife? Bitsy. Don't make any noise. No luck? We got half of it. That's all they said they could afford. We may have to take a swing through that Delta country yet. You still think you got a chance? Oh, we make it all right. No question about that. Just that we'll have to hustle a little harder, that's all. He's asleep. Did you give him the prune stuff? Gave him the prune stuff, washed the dishes, mopped the kitchen, darned three pair of socks. Oh, darling, I'm terribly sorry. Mm, I remember. This seems like a lot of worry now, but when she's Mrs. America, you laugh at it. She's going to be one of the most famous women in the United States. And do a roll in faster than you can count it. How? Why, through personal appearances, of course. Nightclubs, radio, movies, things like that. No nightclubs in Senatobia that I know of? Maybe not, but there are plenty of them other places. New York, Chicago, Hollywood. London, Paris, Rome. And all this time, I'm supposed to be hanging out the diapers? Why, certainly not. You'll be right with her. Is that really the way you figure it? Why, of course. Well, I'm going to be with her, all right. But it's not going to be in New York or Paris or any of those other places. I'm going to be with her right here in Senatobia, in this very house where we are now. And if there are any more diapers to be hung out, she's going to hang them. What do you mean, Jeff? Because you're not going anywhere anymore. You have been scratched. You are now the ex, Mrs. Mississippi. What's he talking about? 
But what does it mean? Just what it says. What I wired the National Committee this afternoon. But, Jeff... That due to very unusual circumstances, our marriage wasn't legal. And you are no longer eligible for the contest. You mean it means we're not married anymore? It does. champion, Miss Mississippi! <laughs> Here, hold this, will you? Fiance. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's all right. Go ahead and look. I gotta get used to it sooner or later. There's your mummy. There's your mummy. Wave your mummy. Wave your mummy. Thank you. Wave your mummy. Well, I guess we can send theirs back. Who's next? Next, Mr. and Mrs. Hector C. Woodruff. Lamb Hassett, Long Island, New York. Oh, I remember it. Ten and five one. Well, which were they? Oh, well, don't you remember that Gabby couple that came down from New York? Talk, talk, talk all the time. Nothing but talk. Of course. Yeah. He helped her in, helped her out, helped her back in the car, hugging and kissing and talking all the time. Yaggity, yak, 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 yak. <laughs> in town today? Terrible. <sighs> Madge called today. Skill. What you have to say? Oh, nothing much. Spent a night in peak school, huh? Book of the month came today. was what? The book this month. Oh. I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. Remember that? What is it? I should remember that night for Latin Quarter. No. 
sure you remember. The night we got mixed up with all those Texans. We all got higher in kites, remember? Then we moved the party on up to my place and kept it going for two days. Don't you remember? No. You know why not? Why? That wasn't me with you that night. Oh. No? I've never been in the Latin Quarter in my life. I could have sworn it was you. Barbara, probably. If it wasn't you, I don't remember who it was. Well, that girl with those wonderful big gums. What was her name? Why do you keep saying that? Her gums weren't any bigger than anybody else's. Or maybe it was Frankie. I don't even know a Frankie. Wasn't that her name? That fat one you picked up at a bus stop. Francesca, and she wasn't fat either. She looked like a bag full of watermelons. Cut it out, will you? Well, anyway, that's the piece I kept playing that night. Where are you going? To get the book. Sweet stuff. Wednesday? If I can wait. Thursday. Thursday. Mm. Friday? Friday. Saturday?
a big one this month. What is that burning? Just another one of those sucker ideas. Well? Oh, I guess so. Who's next? Next, Mr. and Mrs. Frederick S. Melrose. Dallas, Texas. Oh, uh, now there's a fella I really liked. $25. Yeah, he was a wonderful fella. He must be worth a zillion. you go to New Orleans. That's right, New Orleans. Is it fun there? <laughs> Do you mean for me? No, I mean nice restaurants with music and dancing like that. Oh, I imagine so. I never tried it myself. Now, don't you ever go out in the evenings? No. But what do you do after you're through with your business? Go straight back to the hotel? As a rule, yes. Occasionally, I drop in somewhere for a bowl of puffed rice first. How would you like me to fly down and join you there one night? Maybe tonight. And we took a look around the town together, just for the fun of it. I, indeed, I would, Pucci. I did. Uh, we, we might have another shot at the rumba, <laughs> eh? What time do you get through with your business? Oh, 9.30, 10, something like that. I could meet you. Wouldn't be necessary. I'll have dinner on the plane, yeah. take a taxi straight to the hotel. No trouble at all. What hotel is it? You know, the Calvin Coolidge, where I always stay. All right, then. It is a deal. Absolutely, and a jolly good one, too. <laughs> Look here. Do you think I should have a cold bottle of the bubbly waiting for you? That's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be there. And more where that came from. You won't change your mind now, will you? Don't be silly. You'll just be there in the room. You and the champagne. <laughs> and I take care of the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll be there all right. Oh, yes. And don't forget to register for me. Oh, of course not. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, is that the bedroom? Yes. Thank you. You know, I'm so mad I could spit. My watch stopped. I kept thinking it looked mighty late to be 9.30. I'm afraid we're a bit at sixes and sevens, aren't we? What do you mean, sixes and sevens? Well, I, uh, I'm afraid you have the wrong room. Oh, have I? Oh, isn't this 907? Yes. Melrose? Well, well, that's my name, of course. We're okay, honey. I beg your pardon? Oh, did you shut that door? What? Well, yes. Open it, will you? But I... Uh, Go ahead. Open it. They'll be here in a minute. Oh, really? Thanks. You Melrose? Yes, may I ask who you are? And where is Mrs. Melrose? She's not here. I'm expecting her a little oh, later. Getting ready to throw a big one, eh? Now look here, my good man. Who's the dame? I haven't the faintest idea. Not the missus? Certainly not. This young woman just walked in here. I never saw her before you in all You guys my... get that? Got it. 
That's all, pal. Good night. Now, look here. I demand an explanation Good of this. Good night. Good night, Mr. Melrose. Good night. my attorney, Mr. Stone. How do you do? We're not liable to be interrupted here, are we? No, I'm afraid not. You met Mr. Magnus, I believe. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, you. Now, see here. Uh, uh, this man... Uh, uh, just a moment, please. Uh, sit down, Mrs. Melrose. I understand you're not contesting the divorce action. No, but... Uh, you're smart because I hate to think of the job we could do on you if you tried to get tough about it. Now, look here, that's not it at all. I'm not opposing Mrs. Melrose's action for divorce for the simple reason that I have no wish to hold her against her will. If I had suspected for one moment that she no longer loved me... Okay, then, we can get to the meat and potatoes. You know what a property settlement is, don't you? Of course. Uh, uh, sit down, will you? And you know about the community property law we've got in this state. In a sense. Well, the sense in this case is that Mrs. Melrose is already entitled under the law to 50% of the estate. 50%? One half of the total. Well, that part of it we don't even have to discuss. Oh, but look here, that, that doesn't seem quite fair to me. I, I, it, well, does it to you? Yes, but think of how it simplifies the situation. How do you mean? With that much of it settled, all we have to discuss now is how much of your half she wants. My half? Look here, I think I'd better get my lawyer, Mr. Longstreet. You may take my word for it, that you'll be very sorry if you do. I've got a list of your assets here somewhere. Mrs. Melrose has had some difficulty in locating some of the items, but the law takes a very stern view of concealed assets, so I'm sure we can count on your cooperation in completing it. Now, see here, if you think... I'm going to give Mrs. Melrose one cent more than she's entitled to. You're wasting your time. You're not. I am not. Well, that's final. Mr. Melrose, I had hoped we could all be spared this embarrassment, but if, if you're going to be unreasonable about this, I have no cause but to remind you that there are laws in this country, criminal laws, against the kind of entertainment you have permitted yourself on business trips. Do I make myself clear? Criminal? Laws. Entirely aside from the divorce action, there are aspects of this case that would be of the greatest interest to the district attorney. We chose to call his attention to them. Well, okay. you, you wouldn't dare do that. This was obviously a frame-up. I, I never saw that hotel woman in my life. Would you like to explain that to a judge and jury? Well, I, <laughs> I most certainly would. You tell them that, we'll show them this. Well, you can bet you hoy. Is that your handwriting or not? Well, let's see what we have here. First, of course, is the Willow Avenue house. I'd better keep that to live in. Yes, and contents, of course. Of course. Uh, we'll send you your clothes. Next is the checking account at the Seventh National Bank. I'll need that, too, for running expenses. Yes, we'd better slap a court order on that one immediately before he writes any more checks. But I, I'm a little short already. Next looks like the jackpot. The AT&T stock, you really went to town on that one, didn't you? 30,000 shares. That's the one I'm really interested in. Blackmail, that's all it is. It's blackmail. Please, Mr. Melrose, Mrs. Melrose is still your wife. Next, we have two cars, one limousine and one Jeep. I take the limousine. Very wise choice. 
Government bonds for the value of, uh, let's see now, uh, 1,000, 11. Oh, um, yes? The pawnhouses are here. Oh, I'll be right out. Don't send them away. Oh, I'll, I'll see them outside. I'll, uh, will you excuse me, please? Uh, excuse me. Get Mr. Longstreet on the phone, quickly. Traffic 45267. Mr. Melrose, Mr. Longstreet, please. Oh, would you try to locate him? It's very important. <laughs> He's out of his office. I'm waiting. Uh, would you like to see the mail? This one looks important. From the governor's office. <laughs> Thank you, I'll wait. I don't need him now. <laughs> what? Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh uh, permit me. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, well, shall we proceed? Oh, thanks. Bonds to the value of one hundred and twenty-five thousand. Two hundred and twenty-eight thousand. Two hundred and twenty-eight thousand. That's right. Thank you. Not at all. Next, we have a one-third interest in the Melrose Production Corporation with an estimated value of one hundred thousand dollars. I'd venture to say that that valuation would come closer to uh, three hundred thousand. <laughs> three hundred thousand. I should think so, or give or take a few thousand. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm talk. Next, 500 shares Metropolitan Concrete Corporation. 800. What is this? I beg your pardon? What is this all of a sudden you're so cooperative? Well, didn't you tell me that it's illegal to conceal assets? Oh, yes. Of course. I see. <laughs> now, I, I, if you will permit me to have a look at this list, I think I might be able to save all of us a bit of time. Now, let me see here. Uh, very good. Very good indeed. Oh, this one's a bit short. A few thousand. Uh, I'm afraid she's under and consolidated, but only a few thousand dollars. Well, now, as far as I can see, she has overlooked only two items of any consequence whatsoever. There is the uh, uh, safe deposit bar. Where? Hmm? Uh, the title trust. Should be a goodly sum there, you know. Oh, quiet, you know. Then there's my interest in that Florida hotel. Suppose I jot them both down. <laughs> this, of course, is uh, round numbers. <laughs> Now, will you sign that? Oh, uh, 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 thank oh, you. Yes. Thank you so much. I... Why not sign it? It's quite accurate now. Yeah. I'll have the contract drawn up and ready for you this afternoon. Whenever you say.
right then, let's go. Eve. This is the end, I suppose. It is. Then might I have perhaps just one or two moments with you before you go? Sure. I'm afraid I have a confession to make to you, my dear. Yes? In my distress over this wretched business, in my resentment, actually, I have been tempted to hold out of this settlement what is probably the most valuable of all our joint assets. But now, in these, our last few moments together, I find I can't. I don't think my conscience would give me another day's peace if I were to try to withhold from you. It's just a few simple words on a simple sheet of paper. But take it, my dear, and bless you. Are the two gentlemen still there? Yes, sir. Please tell them for me that they may drop in any time now and pick up their client. Yes, sir. Any more? One more. Mr. and Mrs. Wilson Boswell Fisher, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, that was a couple whose fathers came chasing after them. He was going in the army, and she was that cute little stenographer. No. All right, break it up. Come on, get the lead out. Everybody aboard. Let's get rolling. Well, come on. Did you tell her what time? Sure, I told her last night. I'll have to write to her. There she is! Hey, Patsy! Patsy! What did she say? She said the doctor says you are. Or oh, what? What do you think or what? No! Sarge, can you step back to the smoker for just a second? What is it? Willie Fisher's in something of a situation. Oh, God. You're nice. Sorry, I could have sworn it. What's the trouble? Willie's gonna have a baby. Oh, yeah? All I know is she was going to the doctor this morning, and that's what she hollered to me at the depot in front of everybody. No matter where you hear it, it's always a surprise. But it looks like they got a little complication here. Show them the letter. Oh, on top of everything else, I gotta get this. Well. That's the way I figure it, too. Looks like you hit the jackpot. What do you mean? If this was on the level, you don't have to pay this dame a nickel. Who's talking about nickels? This is serious stuff. Somebody's trying to throw a curve at my kid. How do you mean? Well, it's like this, Sarge. You don't like to come right out and say it. 
But if he ain't married like it says in the letter, how about the kid? Will he be what they say, legitimate? Oh. What I mean, we're headed for overseas, and I can figure on marrying again when I get back, but what if I don't get back? What about the kid then? Will he be all right? No. But it's not our fault, Sarge. It's their fault. If they don't know how to run their own business... The law don't care whose fault it is. If you ain't married to the dame when the kid is born, it's a foul ball. But what can he do, Sarge? Look, he don't want to leave no foul ball on his wife's hands. Marry her again, I guess, if that's the way he sees it. But how? Are we going to get some leave before we sail? Nope. We're going aboard tomorrow afternoon to sail tomorrow night. But in a case like this, when a guy's wife is in a situation, couldn't you explain it to the CO? What's he got to do with it? This is orders from the old man. There's only one thing I can think of for you to do. What's that? Try not to get shot. What's the matter with him? Who don't try not to get shot? It looks like we're coming to a town. This is awful. He could be wrong, too, remember? No, no, that's the way it looks to me, too. I can't have people pointing the finger at my kid. I gotta do something about it, Pinky. This is the kind of a thing can ruin his whole life. But well, look, he ain't even born yet. Born or no born. Take care of my stuff, will you, Pinky? What are you gonna do? I'll see you on the boat. Oh, look, you're, you're crazy. I'll stick you in Leavenworth. There ain't nobody gonna point the finger at my kid. Wait a minute, Willie. You're crazy nuts. Hi. How late do you open? Five o'clock. Five o'clock, thank you. Some guy? Why? Take a look in yonder. What's he look like?
is it, Willie? We got a kid coming and we ain't married. That blub ahead that married us didn't have his commission or something. Who says so? The government says so. They wrote me a letter. If we're not married when the kid is born... Listen, mister, me and my wife have got to get a license. We've got to get married right away instantly. We're closed. Understand? It's after five o'clock. I tell you, we got to have that license. I'm sailing tonight and we got to be married. This kid's going to have a baby and I'm not going to leave her here not married. You understand? Come on, will you? Well, I'd just certainly like to do whatever I could. All right, then let's have it. There's an application. I know. Where's the pen? Oh, come here, honey. Groom's name, age, color, occupation. What about that one, number six? Single, widowed, or divorced. Check one. Gee whiz. I think it's single. What about the other time? Well, you can fix it up down here where it says number this marriage. First. No, second. That'll fix it, won't it? Well, it'll either fix it or us. Still two bucks, I reckon. That's right. Thank you very much. You got the book to marry us? Oh, no. I can't marry you. I'm not allowed to. But who marries us? Well, there's a justice of the peace right across the street next to the lunchroom. Is he open? Oh, yes, he's been giving 24-hour service ever since we got the naval base here. Next to the lunchroom, did you say? That's right. If he's not in his office, look in the lunchroom. He may be having a cup of coffee. Thanks. Thanks very much. I can't tell you how much we really appreciate it. Yeah, I told it. him all that, honey. Oh. All I need now is get picked up by those MP baboons. There they are. See that JP's office over there? Yes. We gotta get over there fast. I got it. You cross over and swing it a little. What? Just a little so those apes will keep their eyes on you, understand? All right, but what are you gonna do? I'll meet you over there inside. Just give me a second or two to get started and then you take off. Uh, not too much, you understand? I understand. You, Vic? Hi, Ned. After somebody? Yeah, some guy without a pass, I guess. Where's the judge? Oh, come on. Judge? It's a star drag. Fix it. So long, Judge. Be seeing you, Judge. Good afternoon. Look, you got a commission or something that says you have the right to marry people? Why, of course, Let me but see I... it. Certainly. There it is. Nothing personal. It's just that I took a guy's word for it once. So where's the date? Right there. Oh, thanks. Okay. We want to get married. Uh, have you a marriage license? Yeah, it's right here, sir. Uh, come here, honey. Uh, a physical report? A physical what? You have to have a physical report, too. Is that the law? In this state, it is. But what about I'm in the army? Ain't that physical enough? I'm afraid not. But it's a very simple matter. Any physician can physician. fix you up in five minutes. Where There's one around the... What? 
really, we just can't do it. What do you mean? We can't do it because we're going to be married. But I... I'd... Not after we wrote that we were single, don't you see? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, Judge, uh, Mrs. Fisher and I are in a little sort of a situation here. Uh, uh, couldn't you just skip it just this once? For a saw buck, maybe. Don't be ridiculous. But the fact is, if she went to a physician... I just won't do it, that's all. I simply won't do it. I'd rather take a chance, Willie. I can't understand what she's so worried about. It's only a blood test. You mean just a jab in the thumb? That's all. Okay, where's the nearest doctor? Just a couple of doors from here. On the other side of the lunchroom. Ain't there any place in this town that ain't next door to that lunchroom? Come on, honey. Look, the catch Don't right? argue. I'm gonna be hung as it is. <coughs> is the doc in? Have you an appointment? No, but we want a physical report to be married right away. Will you sit down? He'll be free in just a moment. <coughs> Way over. <coughs> he said it's just a blood test. All they do is jab you in the thumb. <coughs> Yes, sir, he's a nice fellow. I've always liked him. Well, Doc, we'll be seeing you. Fine, drop in again, both of you. <laughs> Which was it? Your husband or your boyfriend? Both. On the same ship? What business is it of yours? None, of course. But there might be something I could do for you. Aren't you a little old for this kind of cruising? A little old for one thing. And for another, I'm a chaplain. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't see your cross. Oh, that's all right. It's rather flattering, in fact. Now, now, do you feel like talking about it a bit? What's the use now? Well, how can we tell until I know what the problem is? It's no use now. It's too late. But, oh, Padre, how we could have used you two hours ago. Come on. All ready? We're going to put you on for the floor show. Standing by, sir. Okay. Come on, come on! All right, Fisher, over here. Sit down. All set? Go ahead, sir. Willie? Yes, sir? Sit down. That's coming from the speaker. Yes, sir. Dearly beloved, Attention. we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Patricia Reynolds, wilt thou have this man for thy wedded husband? I will. Wilson Boswell Fisher, wilt thou have this woman for thy wedded wife? You sure this is legal, sir? Answer the man, you jughead! I will. Really. Therefore, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and with the authority conferred upon me, 
I pronounce that they are man and wife. Hi, honey. Hi, baby doll. That's all, I'm afraid, dear. Okay, sir. Good night, Daddy. Oh. <laughs> I forget all of my time. Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health? Okay, Panther Girl. Okay, White Fang. Okay. 